Microsoft SharePoint is a very powerful document repository, and many organizations leverage this capability by implementing a review and approval process before publishing documents to a particular document library. The goal of this K2 application demonstration is to walk you through the process of running a K2 application for document review and approval. Let's begin. In looking at the overall design of this application, we will think in terms of workflows, forms, reports, and data, since these are the main elements that make up a K2 application. We will be separating the review workflow from the approval workflow in this design, since it is not always necessary to submit documents for review before they are approved. Consequentially, documents may need to go through several review cycles before they are submitted for approval and publishing. The review workflow will allow the requester to submit the document for review to one or more reviewers. Upon doing this, the system will update the document status to indicate that reviews are pending. A review document task will be delivered to all reviewers assigned to review the document by the requester with two possible outcomes for this task. If all the reviewers accept the document, the system will set the document status to reviews accepted email the originator to let them know that their document was accepted, and then end the workflow. Alternatively, our rework step comes into play as soon as any one of the reviewers indicates that the document is not accepted by actioning their task with rework required. The document will be routed back to the originator so that they can either cancel the document review outright or edit the document accordingly and send it back for review again. In each case, the system will update the document's properties to indicate the review status of the document in order to provide visual feedback to anyone looking at the document from the SharePoint list. Now let's consider the document approval workflow. This workflow can be submitted to one or more approvers at any given time similarly to the review workflow. The system will update the document status to indicate that it is currently waiting for approval. If all approvers approve the document, the system will move the document to the approved documents library and email the originator to let them know that their document was approved. However, if any one of the approvers rejects the document, the document status will be updated to reflect this and the workflow will end. For our data capture capability, we will be using the K2 generated forms for user interaction, but keep in mind, the forms will not be used to start the workflow automatically. The user will be able to manually initiate the workflow anytime they like from the document context menu inside the document library. K2 Smart Forms will be used mainly so that we can customize the form layouts through the browser designer since we cannot easily do this when using the default SharePoint forms. And to show this capability, we will be using a customized version of the edit document form in this demonstration that has two workflow status fields removed from it. You can learn how to do this in the optional step, which happens to be the last step of the build guide for this application. K2 workflow reports will be enabled so that users can report on any given workflow, and we will utilize this in an interesting way with the document approval workflow later on. For our data source, we will be using two separate document libraries. One called Documents to Review and Approve will act as the working area for documents as they are updated and follow the review and approval workflows. The second library called Approved Documents will be the landing site for documents once they are approved for release at the end of the approval workflow. Because any document review and approval system needs documents in order to work, let's start this demonstration by first uploading two documents and then we'll start the review document workflow for both of them. I'll go ahead and open the Documents to Review and Approve library, and then I'll click the New Document link to upload the first document. I'm going to upload Demo Document 1 and configure the properties for this document as follows. For the name, I'm going to leave the generated value as is. And then for title, I'm going to set it to Demo 1 Doc Review and Approval. In selecting reviewers, for the sake of time, I'll just enter one user in here. In this case, I'll use the administrator account to make it easier to demonstrate, since that's the account I'm logged in as. For my approvers list, I'll go with the administrator account again. Upon saving this, notice that we're using the K2 Smart form called Edit Documents 
To handle the editing capability for this particular document library. Now I'm going to upload another document and configure the properties for it as follows. Again, the name, I'm going to leave this one alone. And then for title, we'll call it Demo2, Doc Review, and Approval. This time for reviewers, I want Cody to review this document in order to demonstrate usage with other users. Then for approvers, I'm going to have Bob take on that role for this document. Now we did set this up so that multiple reviewers and approvers can be added to the list, but I'm going to keep it down to just one for this demonstration. I'll save this back. And at this point, I need to check in both of the documents that were uploaded using the context menu options. This is so that they are available for the reviewers and approvers later on in the workflow to see, as well as for the workflow to access them. With that, the documents in the library should now be ready for submission to the review workflow. I'll send the first document through the review workflow by opening up the context menu and then from that menu, select the K2 Workflows option. Once we get this page loaded up, inside the K2 Workflows screen, our test calls for submitting this document for review first. So I'll select the Document Review Workflow, and then click the Start button. Once the form is submitted, we will be returned to the document library, and once we get back there, we should see that the Review Status column was updated to Pending Review by the Workflow. To put this in the context of a running workflow now, let's go back to the K2 Workflows area for this particular document. And then we'll check to validate that K2 is tracking the workflow progress. Now, as you can see, the document review workflow has started for the first document based on the instances view here on the page. We can even open up the view flow report by clicking on the icon here to verify that the workflow is waiting for the reviewer to action their task. The next task we need to perform is to return to the document library and then select the K2 Workflows context menu for the second document. From here, we'll start the document review workflow for that one as well. Once it starts, we should be redirected back to the library once again. At this point, with both workflows running, we can change gears and move on to perform the review documents task for each assignee, which was my administrator account and Cody's account. I'll head over to the SharePoint site landing page for this K2 application. And then once we get on that page, we should see a review task assigned to me or at least the administrator in the K2 work list at part. You can see the task sitting there waiting for an action to be taken. Also, as the administrator, I should have received an email notification in my inbox about this task assignment. So let's open up my email client to check that out. And here we do see a notification email from the K2 server asking to review the document. Notice as well that the document is actually attached to the email message and can be opened directly from the email. This was meant to help speed up the review process. Also take notice that we can action this task by replying with an action directly in this email if we want to. I'll complete this particular task now by replying to the email message with an action of reviewed and accepted. And now once I send that off, after a few seconds we should get a confirmation from the K2 server that the task was completed. And there it is. Since the admin account was the only account assigned a task for this document, Basically, all reviewers have fulfilled the requirements to follow the review and accepted path. Let's return to the Documents to Review and Approve library and verify that the first document status is indeed set to Reviews Accepted based on our settings from the workflow. Let's drill into the K2 Workflows context menu for the first document. In here, we should see that the document review workflow for the first document has completed based on K2's audit information. I should also have an email notification about this, so let's head back to the email client for the admin account. And there's my message. Notice it contains information about the document review and its completion in the subject and body of the message. Now it's time that we go through and demonstrate the rework loop for the second document. 
I'll start with an instance of Cody's web browser opened up to the landing page of the site to bring up the K2 Worklist app part for her account. This should show a task waiting for her. And from here, I'll open it up to review the second document through the form this time using the context menu for the task. Notice here that the reviewer cannot change the document properties because the display form was chosen to be the interface for this task assignment. And it wasn't the edit document form. So let's test the rework loop that was built into this review workflow by selecting the rework required action at the top and submit the form back to the workflow originator. Now that we've submitted that, let's look back to the document library and verify that the second document status is set to rework required. Looks good here, which means that there should now be a task assigned to the workflow originator to rework the document. I'm going to flip back over to the email client for the user who submitted the second document for review, which actually, if you recall, was the administrator for this demo. In this task notification email, we only get the ability to action the task by opening the task form in this email message because the email notification was configured not to include the option to reply to the email to complete the task. This is mainly because if a document requires a rework, we would assume that the submitter needs to actually open and rework the document rather than just replying to the email. Now I'll click on the task link to open the task form directly from the email message. In this task, a user now has the chance to open the linked document, make some changes, and then save the document back to the SharePoint library. They would have to perform a checkout and check in in this library, but you can configure that based on requirements in your own environment. I'm just going to select the resubmit for review action and save it back in order to move things along. At this point, let's go back to the documents to review and approve library to verify that the document review status for the second document is actually set to resubmitted for review, since that is what we just actioned the task to do. And it looks like it's working. Let's open the K2 workflows history for the second document from the context menu, and then select the view flow report to verify that the document is back at the review document task. Again, with K2 reporting built in, we have the ability to review the audit history and view flow of workflow instances running against documents. You can see that the review document task is now the active task in the graphic. I'm going to have my reviewer for the second document, which was Cody, review the document again by opening up her email client. We'll just assume that the document is good now and reply to this message with the action of reviewed and accepted. I've got that sent off. Now we'll bounce back to the document library to check the review status column with a refresh of the page. And there we have completed the second document review along with validating that the rework path works in our workflow. In the real world, of course, a document could be submitted and reworked multiple times, but we'll leave it here as it stands since we should be able to handle that scenario with this design. With the first document reviewed and accepted, Let's take a few minutes to run through the document approval workflow to see what happens when a document gets rejected within that workflow scenario. Starting from the Documents to Review and Approve library, I'll go into the context menu to open the K2 Workflows page for the first document. Upon selecting the Document Approval workflow from the Select Workflow dropdown, I'll go ahead and click Start. This should be starting the approval workflow in the background, so let's return to the document library, and then we can verify that the document approval status is set to pending approval. With administrator as the document approver, I'll open up the email client for that account to review the document approval task from the notification, and I want to reply to this email message with the action of rejected. This action should force the workflow to update the approval status column in the document library. So let's go back into the document library and verify that the document's status has actually been set to rejected. Also, based on that decision, I want to open up the approved documents library to verify that the document did not get copied over there, mainly because it was not currently approved. Okay, that looks good because we want to run this again. Before we run another approval workflow, 
Let's go into the K2 workflows area again for this document to look at the audit history. Once this page loads up, we should see two workflows in the workflow history section. These are the two workflows that the document was submitted to, and by quickly drilling into the workflow, I can open the view flow report for each of the workflows to review more historical information. With the reject path of the approval workflow now tested, let's move on and submit the second document to the approval workflow, this time in order to test the approved path. To get that started, I'll use the context menu in the documents to review and approve library in order to open the K2 workflows page for the second document. Then in here, we'll select the document approval workflow from the drop down list again and click start to begin this workflow. While that's running, let's go back into the document library and verify that the document approval status is set to pending approval based on our status update settings from the workflow. I've designated Bob Maggio as the approver for this particular document, so I'll open his email client and review the document approval task as him. This time, I'm going to reply to the email with an approved action. Remember though, I could alternatively open the task from his K2 work list app part and select approved in the task form to send it down that path. Now with that completed, I'm going to return to the landing page of the SharePoint site and verify that the second document was actually moved to the approved documents library. Now from here, I'll open that library quickly, and there the document has been copied over successfully. While we're in here, let's check the audit history of this workflow instance by clicking on the approval history hyperlink. This will direct us to the view flow report immediately where we can track the approval history for the document. We can even click on the user task within this view and see when this task was completed. The last thing I want to show requires going back and opening the originator's email client to view the notification message from the K2 server that the document was approved and actually moved to the approved documents folder. Notice here in this message that it was configured with a link to the document in its new document library home. We added that in to make it easy for the originator to validate that the document exists there when this workflow task is complete. To quickly review the document review and approval K2 for SharePoint application, we really covered quite a bit of information while putting all the components together for this demonstration. We demonstrated document review and approval workflow capabilities in K2 for SharePoint. We also wired up data sources as document libraries inside a K2 application. To provide faster access to the document being reviewed, we received attached documents and email messages for our workflow assignments. To facilitate good collaboration techniques, we used this example to run a document through a rework loop in the workflow. And in the approval workflow, we had a chance to move a document to another library using a workflow step. K2 reporting made an appearance when we added a link to the ViewFlow report for auditing purposes in the properties of the approved document. We also watched multiple K2 workflows run that are associated with the same document library with both the review and approval workflows. Finally, we also got to see workflows in this application configured with the ability to start manually or basically in an on-demand fashion. Thank you for watching this demonstration. When you're ready, we hope you take the time to walk through the document review and approval build guide video in order to build out this application in your own environment.